something that should never have happened has happened again. One day, it's 1943. Generator's activated, sir. The next. It's 1984. Now there's no going back. Now the truth can't be told. Pick him up. I didn't do anything. Now the only person he can trust cannot trust him. And the experiment is still in progress. Only now it's an experiment in terror. And what went wrong, no one can explain. We opened up a hole, Barney, and it stayed open. This now, this time, it's not ours. Michael Paré, Nancy Allen, The Philadelphia Experiment. Friday on HBO. The following feature has been rated PG by the Motion Picture Association of America. Parental guidance is suggested. Clytus, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? An obscure body in the SK system, Your Majesty. The inhabitants refer to it as the planet Earth. I like to play with things while before annihilation. Pathetic earthlings! Who can save you now? Us! Ah! Savior of the universe! Strange object imaged in the imperial vortex. Us! Ah! Is there everyone else? Remove the earth woman. Prepare her for our pleasure. Us! Suicide. No. Then how do you know it was a suicide? 
there's no other explanation. When a person exposes himself to zero pressure atmosphere, there isn't a whole lot left to inspect. Something's there, isn't it? Maybe. Try and meddle, I want you to know what you're meddling with. How do you leave? Dealing with grown ups here. Marshall, you're dead. If you're the kind of guy you're supposed to be, you wouldn't stick around. That's why they sent you here. Maybe they made a mistake. still man. His name is Lyle Swan. He's racing against the clock. Stand by for automatic. In more ways than one. Perimeter violation. Sector four. Terry, is that for real? Because this ride Instead of taking him a thousand miles forward, we'll take him a hundred and five years backward. Dr. Savage, wheel! Senator two. One. Perimeter violations. Abort! Send back. Time Rider, the adventure of Lyle Swan. If I'm right, sir, he stepped out around 1875. Man, am I glad to see you. He just happened to be in the right place at the wrong time. Uh, I was wondering if uh, maybe you could show me on this map here where uh, where I am. And fate gave him a present. Are you okay? Of the past. Where are you going? <laughs> Only trouble was, he didn't know it. Where was that? Where would it go? I don't know. Hey, what the hell's happening here, huh? He didn't understand the people. Hey, why are those guys shooting at me like that? And they didn't understand him. Where did he come from? I'm taking it to us mostly. See, I hang with technoid types. We party and they come up with all this Bonnaroo boogie. In short, everything was different. Take off your clothes. Well, uh, almost everything. You heard me, Mr. Swan. Time Rider. The Adventure of Lyle Swan. General Lee had had that machine. We won the war. The past present fantasy of a desert racer, a beautiful gunslinger. Where are you from, my friend? Canoga Park, L.A. A renegade priest. Beautiful, senor. Where did you get this map? Got it at an Exxon station. And assorted bad guys. Jumped up and down on it. Up and down. Kicked it. Time Rider, the adventure of Lyle Swan, an off-road racer who's way, way off the road. On a distant planet, a great kingdom was ravaged by beings who came from the future to conquer the universe. survivors follow a doubtful seer and a throneless king. They will hold her in the black fortress. You must have help. Thieves, bandits, fighters and brawlers. Desperate men. Those are the kind of men I need. Well, you heard him. We are now an army. At the end of an impossible journey, they must fight an invincible enemy. Here's the knowledge you seek. I shall be your king. In the fortress, you will face more than the slayers. What is about to happen to them could never have happened on Earth. Columbia Pictures presents a world apart from anything you have seen before. Crow.
must be some place in this world where we can live in peace with our people. He is from a future world. Trapped in another time. Searching for his past. A hunter of incredible power and strength. In his quest for his origin, he and the woman he loves must fight hostile tribes. Battle deadly beasts. And try to survive the violent forces of a newly born Earth. He is the warrior known as... Yor. His medallion holds the key to his destiny. His courage makes him master of a world in chaos. His enemy uses the weapons of tomorrow to enslave a primitive planet. But his passion for freedom will set his people free. You're the hunter from the future. Come on, Alex. Do it, buddy. Come what on. Doing? Alex, you come yet? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. What's it this time, Rogan? You joining the Foreign Legion? You guys think I'm gonna hang out here? Go to City College like everybody else? Forget it, man. I'm doing something with my life. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Centauri's the name. He's got a little proposition for you. Are you interested? I guess. <laughs> hey. Where are we? Welcome to Rylos, my boy. You mean like in a game? You may have thought it was a game, but it was also a test. Send out across the universe to find those with the gift to be starfighters. Closing fire! And here you are, my boy. Here you are, starfighters. You, and you alone, stand between us and the black terror of the Kodan. It takes more than a scepter to rule Zur. Star Navigator First Class Grig, you at your service, sir. The lasers, photon codes, and the particle beams. Hey, wait a minute, this is just like back home. There's no fleet, no starfighters, no plan. One ship, you, me, and that's it! Whatever happens, it's you and me forever, right? Frontier is down, the moon is eclipsed, the starfighters are dead in vain! Proceed with a visual attack formation. I'll face it, Alex. You're a born starfighter. At least up there you have a fighting chance in a, in a gun star. Maybe there is a starfighter left. You still want to go? And miss all the excitement? Victory, Victory or death! death. Victory, Victory or death. death! Hurry, Alex! Fire! The Armada's almost run us! But I saw him fight! He could be the greatest starfighter ever! I'm a kid from a trailer park. If that's what you think, then that's all you'll ever be. Burn! How long has been your this fool? Jack Death. I'm a trooper in the 23rd century. Jack Death, Angel City PD. May I see your stats? What did I do? Under Section 7 of the Penal Code, the Council authorized me to administer you a transfer suspect examination. You can't give me a TSE without a warrant. I got your warrant right here now. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want you trouble. Hold that. My job is hunting transfers. I got nothing to hide. Finding them. Negative. And singeing them. Look out! <laughs> Of course, sometimes they find me first. Then it's a little more complicated. How do you know a 
Whisper's location. We monitored a line disruption in Los Angeles, December 1985. Van Zant, Ash and I all had ancestors in the city then. If you think I'm bringing that scum up the line, you got the wrong trooper. Unless you stop Whisper, everything the council has accomplished for the last 40 years will count for nothing. Okay, let's say I believe this. You're a cop from the future and you're chasing this guy Piper. Whistler. Why doesn't he just turn you into one of these zombies? Or me? Trancing only works on squids. People with weak minds, easily controlled. Lena, I'm from another time, another world. I don't even know what you people eat for lunch. Okay, I got fried rice, egg rolls, and beef chow mein. Beef? You mean like from a cow? I thought it was rough in the 23rd century. I didn't know how hot it could get. Jack? How's my tan? It was getting hotter all the time. Jack? I guess I just attract a certain element no matter what century I'm in. This way, mister! Anyway, I gotta run now. I wanna ride with the lady. Over here, Ashby! never even been here before. Trent. Marooned on a desolate planet. He is a soldier. Alone with his enemy. Don't you understand English, code face? I don't love you and you don't love me. We're a stranger here, you understand? His suspicion will change <laughs> to tolerance. You saved my life. Why? I need to look at another face, even as ugly as yours. Tolerance will lead to friendship. We should open up a little place here. I could ruin the food. You could scare away the customers. <laughs> and with that friendship will come an overwhelming responsibility. You must be a parent. Don't get around, Jerry. You must take my place. Protecting a life he values more than his own. Dennis Quaid, Louis Gossett Jr., Wolfgang Peterson's Enemy Mind. They were just like everyone else. They dreamed of going to the stars. But unlike everyone else... What's going on here? They discovered a way to get there. You dreamt it, I built it, and it's our secret. Pretty neat, huh? Then, they took it one step further. I christened thee the Thunder Road. And it worked. Look how fast we're going. I bet we could go anywhere. Do you realize what it means? Now, they're about to find out just how far it can go. Let's face it. Somebody's calling us. Let's yeah. go. All around the world. Did you see what I said? The is the only thing. They're here. All around the world. Rock and roll is the only thing. And you can hear those two pop stopping all night and all through the day. Explorers. We come in peace. <laughs> the adventure begins in your own backyard. Hey, drain the pot.
ponds and the streams, covered the lakes and even the ocean, so no water could evaporate into the air. They caused the drought so they can control our lives. You can't beat them. Protectorate visionaries eventually planned a totally altered Earth and even an altered solar system. Why not genetically alter humans to function perfectly in a perfectly restructured world? conditioned us here to be so afraid. There has got to be a place to go. From a distant star, a powerful force will come to Earth. They call this force Bodai. Where's the sphere? They took it to the Protectorate Aqua Bunker. It's where they control the water. Jason, they're gonna destroy it. If we go, we're not coming back. We're gonna get Bodai. It's unanimous. We go. future, the world has survived. Romance has not. All right, so we'll say a dinner, complete sexual encounter, optional episode in the morning, right? I gotta run this past my own lawyer. Pleasure is strictly business, but it will be possible to have the perfect mate. A Cherry 2000. Looks great. Thanks. Thoughtful. Desirable. She'll never run out on him. Just short out. I'm sorry, kid. Total internal meltdown. Now you got her basic memory right here. Vocal patterns, verbal, whatever. Basic voice. Don't look so glum. Your chassis is out for the count, all right? You got the chip. You go in, you pick yourself out a new model. You slide it in the slot. You got yourself your girl back in a brand new frame. Give me a call if you find a cherry. Cherry 2000. Look, my friend, you're going to be a very old man, round in the middle and bone dry before you find one of those in these parts. That's a chance I'll just have to take. Then, the adventure begins. Why don't you hire a tracker to go into Zone 7? Oh, we got a policy against trackers in these parts. Nobody goes into Zone 7. Remember they got one of the original warehouses down there? Girls stacked on the shelves like pies. I'm looking for someone to go into Zone 7. I'm E. Johnson. You're not going to find anybody better than me, mister. I'm not a machine. Do you know where they keep these babies? We call it the graveyard. It is the worst place in the zone. Well, maybe I can get in there and find this thing, but I need somebody riding shotgun in order to make it out in one piece. I want you to chase those birds till they drop. If you think it's tough to meet the right people now, wait till you go looking for a Cherry 2000. Test pilot Tuck Pendleton wants to make history. Supermarket clerk Jack Putter needs a vacation. Jack, Sir, I'm Jack, sorry. you're late. That's not good. You know it's coupon day. Lieutenant Pendleton is about to be miniaturized, placed into this needle, and then injected into this rabbit. Rock and roll. But something went wrong. And Tuck's about to get a new destination. <gasps> Inside Jack Putter. I'm not a man. Hello, can you hear me? I'm possessed! Now, Jack's got twice the problems. How you doing, Jack? But he's double the man. <laughs> with Tuck on his side. Kick him more cows! 
in his gut <laughs> and on his case. You're not going to back groceries all your life, are you, Jack? And only 24 hours left for Jack to get out of danger so that Tuck can get out of Jack. <laughs> Dennis Quaid, Martin Short. Give yourself a shot of adventure. Inner Space. Change your life completely forever. She's a brunette from Southern California. And he's not. I need romance. I need surprises. A UFO landed in my pool. They captured me. I fed them pop tarts, but you've got to cut their hair. What did you say? They may be from outer space. So, they can still be dates. I think we could just make them look more sort of human. Hey, come on, everybody. We're doing a makeover. But underneath, they're more than human. Wow. You're incredible. I could fix you up with some bodacious chips, just like that. I can't believe you're printing an alien in front of all these people. I'm going home with him. Are we limp and hard to manage? Wait a minute, are you like coming on to me? Her boyfriend's a doctor. I've never ever been unfaithful to you. Whose treatment is totally alienating. Here comes. Dr. Love. And her new love's an alien who's more than accommodating. Do you own your own home or do you rent? Gina Davis, Julie Brown, and Jeff Goldblum in a film directed by Julian Temple and produced by Tony Garnett. I just don't want you to think Earth Girls are easy. Earth Girls are easy. To you, 835 Heavy, could you give me your location? Minneapolis, we are currently heading zero. To you, 835, turn to heading. My God. Jesus, down! Go down! For Flight 35... We are going down! It was the end. Do not be afraid. Or was it? Walk towards the light. What unusual facts have you developed in your investigation? This crash has been crazy from the start. Is there anything at odd? going backwards. I'm afraid I still don't know what you're driving at. I'm simply looking for the inexplicable. I usually find it. You're endangering a project that's bigger than you can imagine. I know damn well we can't change the past. Time travels. They don't want to be found. Then you are from the future. About a thousand years. Sherman, send the gate. Once in a thousand years comes an adventure like this. We've been expecting you. Millennium. in the making based on the biggest selling science fiction story of all time the film is dune to bring dune to the screen is a dream that many have had but in particular this man he is frank herbert the author of dune and even though the book became an instant classic when it was written in 1964 and has gone on to be read by an estimated 40 million people his hopes for the film audience are simple i want them to feel that they have been to do. To give the feeling of reality to a picture set in the year 10,191, a whole new universe had to be designed and brought to life. The man put in charge of this $40 million production was director David Lynch, best known for his Oscar-nominated film, The Elephant Man. It's a challenge and it's a risk because people have their own interpretation, their own you know, mental you know, idea of the way things are going to be. Father, the sleeper has... Awakened. The person responsible for the entire look of Dune was production designer Tony Masters, who has more than 80 films to his credit. For Masters, it was the imaginative, creative challenge that convinced him to come aboard. We had to design everything from the knife and fork up to up to the you know the biggest of the palaces. So it was intriguing. At its height, the production employed 30 draftsmen to convert Tony's original paintings into blueprints for the construction of the sets. 
a scale rarely seen in today's films. It's the biggest I've ever worked on because we've been able to do things in a very large scale here in Mexico that we wouldn't have been able to do anywhere else. As time was drawing nearer to actually begin shooting the picture, Frank Herbert paid a visit to the sets for the first time to see how his dream was growing. The difficulty is actually building the sets, creating the reality that before you could build cheaply in your head. To capture the almost mystical mood of Dune, special attention had to be paid to the musical score. The group chosen to complement the many subtleties of the film was a successful rock and roll band, Toto. While the rest of the group worked on the score, David Page traveled to Vienna to record the band's compositions with the 90-piece Vienna Symphony Orchestra. One of the first locations the crew traveled to was a desert in Juarez, Mexico. 300 workers spent three months clearing away all the bushes, stones, and cactus over 25 square miles. And then there was footprints all over the place, but then two nights ago, they had this huge storm and the wind came in, and now it's, 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 it's just the perfect time to be here. David Lynch and Herbert saw Dune with essentially the same eye. Lynch's screenplay relied heavily on Frank's book, and as a result, a special relationship developed between them. He's been more of a friend and a supporter uh, than anything else, which is the most important thing that he could be. Carlo Rambaldi, who has won three Oscars and created E.T., took on the unenviable chore of bringing life to inanimate clay. We have just folded space from X. With the aid of a complex cable and hydraulic system, operators were able to control levers and simulate 41 lifelike movements. The creature is so beautifully constructed that with my actor's imagination I give him uh, powers of life and I, I act with him. Another of Dune's striking visual effects is the evil Baron Harkonnen's ability to hover through the air. To achieve this result, actor Ken McMillan had to spend hours each day being transformed into his hideous character. His most difficult chore was to bear the weight of a customized fat suit. Once on, McMillan weighed over 400 pounds and had to be helped to the set. Okay, now let's take him back another three and a half inches or so. Great. The wires were painted and specially lit to conceal them from the camera. Two decades have passed since Frank Herbert introduced us to the experience of Dune. And as the ultimate fan, he feels the film has succeeded in its effort to be true to his work. I'm not one of these authors who sits there tearing his hair out saying, what are you doing to my baby? Because I know what they're doing to my baby. They're doing a beautiful job. Finally, on March 30th, 1983, after two years of pre-production, the day arrived that Herbert had dreamed of. The day Dune would come to life. Dune. Slate one, take one. Dune. The Frank Herbert masterwork, cherished by a generation, is on HBO this month. Watch for this incredible film adventure.